The Flash, Season 9, Episode 3, Rogues of War, just aired, and we watched it. Here's my review. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. That guy right here with another weekly review for the final season of The Flash. I've really enjoyed doing these. They've given us an opportunity and a chance to really talk about the episodes in much more depth than I'm able to on the TikToks. If you saw the TikTok review, great. You probably have seen a general gist of my ideas and first impressions about this episode. But I always like doing these YouTube ones. Uh, these YouTube reviews because I feel like they give us an opportunity to, like I said, just really dive in a little bit more into certain elements, certain scenes, certain cameos and reveals that are presented to us in each of these episodes. And season nine, episode three is a big one. We get a lot of reveals for um, some previous characters, right? Some new characters. And we even get a reveal for the Red Death. So this is a uh, kind of a, I guess you could call it a spoiler filled review. If you guys have not watched the episode, which by the time this video is up, you probably watched it already. And you may or may not have watched it with us live on Discord. We go live every week on Twitch, twitch.tv slash that guy ride. We watch the new episode together and then we talk about it after. And trust me, <laughs> you don't want to miss them. This week, we had a lot to talk about. And so without further ado, let's jump into my review for the episode. So I want to kick things off by saying that, you know, uh, you know, season nine, episode two from last week, the one that focuses on uh, Caitlin Snow or, you know, or the lack thereof uh, and John Core, who plays, I don't even remember his name, Mark, right? Mark goes rogue. He tries to free Caitlin or tries to free Frost uh, with the help of Caitlin. It obviously doesn't go well. And that's really the focus on the episode. The episode was called Hear No Evil. And to be honest with you, I felt it, you know, when I reviewed it last week, you know, I've since watched it again, and I kind of stand by my original statements. I would I would give it a solid 7, 7.5, right? It was okay. I liked about half the episode, the, the episode really focusing on the rogues. So I say all that to say that coming into this episode, I was actually really pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed the tone of this episode. I liked the feel and the pacing, and I really just, I really just enjoyed what this episode focused on, right? Which is the rogues. It's called Rogues of War, and the episode does exactly that. It focuses on the rogues. You have Red Death who is presenting or, or kind of building this own rogue team. And we've seen in every episode, one, two, and three, we've seen a new rogue. Episode one, we saw uh, Captain Boomerang. Episode two, we saw the Fiddler. And here we saw, we see this character by the name of Omar. And so it seems like every episode they're bringing in new characters, which I think is great. Barry gets a whiff of this and says, hey, they, you know, this, this rogue team is coming together. We need our own rogue team. And so he goes in, he gets Goldface. He gets, he already has Hartley Rathaway, right? Who's kind of an honorary Flash member at this point. He's not evil. He, I, I don't know who, what Hartley's ambitions are. He used to be evil. Now I think he is, you know, more or less has his own self-interest. Uh, is really just about protecting the ones that he loves. He's not a villain, but he's not necessarily here either. So he's been helping the Flash a little bit, right? Um, but they got Goldface. They got Hartley Rathaway. They obviously have Mark who they convinced to help. Uh, we'll get into that, you know, later in the review. And then we got uh, the hotness. I really enjoy the hotness. I think he's, you know, become a character I used to get kind of annoyed by. Uh, but he's actually a really decent character. I really enjoy him. So having all these characters come together already had me excited, knowing that this was going to be happening in this episode. And I really like that they doubled down on it. It's, it's, uh, it gives you the opportunity to have characters interact with each other in a way that you didn't really get a chance to see. Um in previous seasons you know most of these most of these villains or rogues really only interacted with barry and team flash on their own right so having them all come together and having barry try to convince them that hey there's a bigger threat at play which was always our prediction if you guys saw my tiktok videos i always predicted that barry was going to have to recruit these rogues and they wouldn't they're not necessarily heroes but they're not cold-hearted villains to the point where they're not going to help Barry, you know, if there's a bigger threat at play, right? So when he talks to Golden Face, he reveals that this new villain, if they mess up and destroy the timeline, that messes up your business, right? Hartley has his own reasons why he wants to help. Hotness has a son. So everybody has a stake for which they're willing to put their differences aside and work together, right? And that's exactly what they do. And I really enjoyed that. I like how they, they come up with a plan. They all end up working together and they end up trying to steal this, this component that Red Death's team is trying to acquire in order to advance her plot. And so this, you know, you knew going into this episode that eventually Barry and Red Death were going to meet face to face. And they do. And and the reveal itself of that reveal um, and of Barry coming face to face 
you know, as the Flash with Red Death. Well, it was decent, you know, it was cool. I, I don't know, you know, there's not really, at this point, with all the speedsters that they've had in the past seasons, there's not really anything that could have been done that would be like wow factor because we've kind of seen it all at this point. Uh, but I think it's just the appearance of Red Death that I think a lot of people are anticipating. And we've gotten glimpses and teases over the last two episodes. And this one was like, yeah, th this character's here, right? And so it was exciting. I, I really enjoyed that. They didn't really go at it. They didn't They didn't have a fight or anything. But, you know, Barry, obviously, and, and the team, after getting turned on by Mark, who, by the way, Mark turns on everybody, they end up, you know, getting swept by Red Death. And Red Death says some snarky comment and just zips off with everybody. First of all, I didn't know Red Death could hold four people. So that was a surprise. Um, but, yeah, the reveal itself was pretty cool. And so... I think, you know, like I said, in, in keeping up with their conversation about the rogues, I really enjoyed the rogues a, as a character. I like the plot that's happening. I really still believe that it's going to be a, a one team, one side versus the other thing. So rogue, you know, the rogues are building a time machine, I think, with the help of Red Death. We're not really sure why, but we believe it has something to do with whatever is going to be revealed in the next episode, the next two episodes, The Mask of the Red Death Part 1 and 2. And so overall... I really enjoyed the rogues of war i think it was a solid episode i liked the comedic humor that was placed in i felt like it landed and it, it was it was perfectly placed and there was a little bit of action there and it's nice just to see barry have to team up with people that he wouldn't normally team up with and i think that's really cool you know and like i said these aren't exactly heroes but the fact that they're willing to put their differences aside work together with barry allen and and in order to get a a common enemy off the board I think it was pretty cool. So all in all, like I said, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Now getting into some nitty gritty components of it. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I guess we'll talk about some things that I'm not too fond of. You know, I think within this episode, like I said, I like the rogues of war, but I didn't like, I don't like what they're doing with Chester and Allegra. I don't really know what their purpose is, where they're going with that. Uh, it seems that, you know, whatever is happening between these two there's something deeper there they had a kiss at the beginning of the season and now they're kind of doing that typical cw fashion where they um they have these characters kind of play play around each other a little bit you know where you're kind of hoping that they'll just you know, stop beating around the bush and just 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 hook up just get together you know it, it seems so easy we only have 13 episodes so there really isn't a lot of time to, to play around but chester doesn't want to bring it up you know allegra is kind of avoiding him so you know that aspect just felt kind of cheesy and corny and it felt like it didn't need to be there but here we are right it is what it is i didn't really like that fact the other fact that i didn't like was uh, i've been excited about red death and specifically i've been excited about red death's appearance in this final season and for her to finally reveal herself to you know barry and and to you know that she is the villain she's the one pulling the strings right and while i did enjoy that part i did not like the end I did not like the ending sequence and if you saw it which i'm assuming you have you're watching this review it really just involved a very corny line delivered from javicia leslie's batwoman or or you know whoever you want to call this character red death uh after you know she reveals herself to mark she says i am vengeance and i gotta say in terms of delivering iconic lines if you're going to deliver an iconic line that's from a previous movie or from a very well-known well-respected well-loved character like batman you got to nail it, man. You got to deliver the line. And this is nothing against Javicia Leslie. I think she does a, a decent Batwoman. Um, however, I, I don't feel like the line was delivered very well. It just felt corny. And then it's followed by a subsequent, very awkward, eight-second stare down between her and Mark, uh, you know, where Mark just looks terrified. Uh, and Javicia, you know, Leslie's uh, Batwoman, or Red Death, is just kind of looking overly menacing so there's a little too much on one side there was too much on both sides and just not enough in terms of the the dialogue that was delivered to make that feel intense to make it feel powerful and, and, and intimidating you know what i mean i just felt like it didn't land and so watching it i i have i'm just rolling dude i was rolling i could not believe that they not only copy pasta this line but they did it so poorly i feel like if you're in the director chair you're the writers you gotta like I'm going to need you to do that again. I'm going to need you to do that a couple times because we need this line to be delivered in a way that is just, yes, you know? Um, but it just feels like they did it one one take and was like, yeah, that's great. Let's move on. Like, whoa, whoa. You know, I, I don't know. I just can't imagine you had anybody would have watched that scene was like, yeah, that, that was very, that was a very intimidating scene. That's exactly how we wanted to, 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 you know, showcase Red Death. 
and i say all that and i you know and when i post a video about it i i continue to want to preface that with the fact that i'm not against javishi leslie as batwoman i'm not even i don't even care that that red death is being depicted as batwoman instead of batman like we know from the comics it is what it is but if you're gonna bring a character that's so you know um that people have been so interested in for a long time since season five since this character was mentioned you gotta bring something you know you gotta deliver the, the you gotta deliver an epic performance on par with with zoom and savitar and, and and some of these other speedsters because if you're gonna be a speedster in this show there is a high bar that you have to reach no matter who you are you know what i mean even if it was batman i would be saying the same thing if batman somebody you know they casted a batman for this film or for the show this episode and if that Batman had come in and said that and it was not delivered well, we'd be having the same conversation. I'd be like, you know, I just don't know. I'm not convinced, you know? And so it is what it is. Like I said, it's not against Javicia Leslie. I think the writing, that, that line just shouldn't have been there. And that I, I did enjoy that. So I, I'm, you know, I'm still holding out hope, but that hope dwindled a little bit in terms of how Red Death is going to be depicted and compared to, because it is, it is, you know, this character is going to be compared to the likes of Red Death, to Reverse Flash, just Avatar, Godspeed, you know, it, it just is, you know, to the other speedsters that have been on the show, you know, you have a high bar to reach. And so it is what it is. But um, yeah, other than those two elements, and the Keon, the, you know, we don't even need to talk about the Keon aspect. I, I'm not a big fan of Keon. I don't know what they're doing with that character. But, you know, every episode that passes, I continue to feel like, you know, was this necessary? And so it is what it is. My general impressions of the season so far, right? We're about, uh, we're about 20% through the season, you know, the final season. So far, I would say, I, you know, I've enjoyed about 75% of it. I really enjoyed episode one. I really enjoyed episode three. Episode two, I wasn't a big fan of. I enjoyed some of it. Um, so, so far, so far, so good. I would say in terms of final seasons, it's, it's starting off strong. And I think as the plot thickens and characters are revealed and characters return, like Arrow and Diggle and Wally, right? I think it's going to only get better. So I'm looking forward to what's left in the final season. I, I'm, I'm enjoying doing these reviews every week. I hope that for those who are watching that you are enjoying them as well. I think there's a lot of it's an opportunity for us to discuss and and you know say what we say and enjoy the the final episodes because there are only so many and overall as it stands i think this episode did a decent job at, at you know progressing the plot in a, in a strong way I, like i said just some minor gripes here and there overall great episode but let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about this episode did you enjoy it did it meet your expectations and if you did enjoy it what was something that you that you liked about it I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. I love having these conversations every week. If you guys want to talk about The Flash with us in uh, a live format, right, where we can talk about things, you know, play some games and stuff like that too, come over, hang out with us on twitch.tv slash that guy Rye, where we stream multiple times a week. And it's typically a really good, fun time. I really enjoy talking to you guys who are watching the videos, whether on YouTube or TikTok. And when you guys stop over on the Twitch side and hang out with us live, I find it to be a really great time and it's always nice to meet new people and, and hang out with you guys so thank you so much for watching if you guys did enjoy dropping a like on this video greatly helps out supports the channel and supports this video and it really means a lot to me subscribe if you're new here we'd love to have you but I, that's all i have to say about this episode i'm very excited to see episode four and five mask of the red death is right around the corner and hopefully we get a little bit more of a understanding of who this character is maybe my opinions uh my initial opinions of this character will change but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. As always, guys, my name is that guy, Rye. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.